Okay, how does your diet recommendation address the law of small numbers that Dr. Bernstein talks about? In other words, wouldn't high carbs imply high insulin dose and thus higher chance of hypoglycemia? Okay, so I assume this question is coming from a person living with type 1 diabetes. That's my assumption here. And this is where what we're doing here and what we're seeing and what happens in client after client after client is simply mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing in the sense that people start doubling, like quadrupling, like just eating dramatically more total carbohydrate and still seeing their total insulin dosages go down. We've seen this many, many times on people even following a ketogenic Bernstein style diet. We've seen that. Um, and it, particularly the ratio adjusts. So one of the guidelines, if I'm remembering correctly, in Dr. Bernstein's book is to not take more than seven units of fast acting insulin per meal. And I can promise you that if you follow this approach, you maximize your insulin sensitivity, you will get all the energy you need, all the carbohydrate energy you need, and not need to inject more than seven units per meal. So it just basically comes down to improving insulin sensitivity. I mean, again, Dr. Bernstein has published articles uh, on his program, his results, and in the published paper, the 24-hour insulin sensitivity is one to one. So on average, on average, okay? So they're, they're using, that's, so if you follow the diet, like roughly 30 grams of carbohydrate, a lot of people following his program are still using roughly 30 units of insulin per day, per day. And on our program, you can eat hundreds and hundreds of grams of carbohydrate and need less than 30 units a day in a majority of cases. And your insulin sensitivity is gonna to go to more like, on 24 hour ratio, I'm 22 to one. Cyrus is even a little higher than that. And we have clients in our program who are even higher than that. So the change in insulin sensitivity is dramatic. So you think you're gonna eat more high carbohydrate food, you think you're gonna need more insulin, and it's actually not what happens. Yes, so here's another way to think about it. Uh, the Dr. Bernstein diet, which is effectively a ketogenic diet, um, teaches you to eat, to, to minimize your carbohydrate intake dramatically and to eat nothing more than about approximately 30 grams of carbohydrate per day. And, and the law of small numbers that you're referencing here says that if your carbohydrate intake is very small per meal, then your insulin use will also be very small. And that is a true statement if you are operating in a high fat environment, okay? So the Bernstein approach is a high fat environment. The ketogenic diet is a high fat environment. So in that environment, when fat is the predominant macronutrient, then you have to, you have to eat small amounts of carbohydrate in order to use small amounts of insulin because the high fat environment is effectively blocking insulin from doing its job. So what we advocate is to not operate in a high fat environment because when you do, you have to keep your carbohydrate intake small. What we suggest instead is to take your total fat intake and make it much smaller. So now you're operating in a very low fat environment. And as a result of operating in a low fat environment, now your carbohydrate intake can go up. What Dr. Bernstein would argue, and what many people in the world of low-carbohydrate nutrition would argue, is they would say, okay, well, if you're eating a meal that has 50 grams of carbohydrate or 100 grams or maybe 150 grams of carbohydrate in it, then we would expect that your insulin use would also be extremely high. But just like Robbie was saying, just because your carbohydrate intake goes up does not mean that your insulin use goes up dramatically, Okay. So if you go from eating a meal that has 10 grams of carbohydrate to a meal that has 100 grams of carbohydrate, which is a tenfold increase, you would predict that your insulin use would also be tenfold higher. But in reality, your insulin use is not tenfold higher. It is absolutely not tenfold higher because the Mastering Diabetes Method um, allows you to gain tremendous amounts of insulin sensitivity. So we still, to be perfectly honest, we still play a lot of small numbers. We really do. But our law of small numbers says you can get away with eating large amounts of carbohydrates still using a small amount of insulin. That's our law of small numbers that I literally just made up right now.